Hello everyone. Today we continue with wave energy module and today we discuss wave types and how we can determine the wavelengths and the wave speed for different types of waves. On this slide I show summary how waves are defined and what types of waves we have and also how you can calculate wave speed and wavelengths for each wave type. We have three types of waves, intermediate waves, deep waves, and shallow waves. And these are defined based on the ratio of the water depth divided by wavelengths. So when this ratio is between 0 0.05 and 0 0.5, we have intermediate waves. When this ratio is greater or equal than 0 0.5, we have deep waves. And when this ratio is less or equal than 0 0.05, we have shallow waves. And for deep waves, we have dependence on wave period only, no dependence on, wa on water depth. And for shallow waves, we have dependence on water depth. And it's only for intermediate waves, we have dependence on both, on wave period and water depth, for wave speed and wavelengths. And these are my equations for wave speed, and these are my equation for wavelengths. I personally would prefer, instead of a table, to have a graph. And here I also present a summary of wave types and how you can calculate the wave speed and wave lengths for different wave types. So if we plot the graph of the ratio of wave lengths divided by wave lengths for deep water, and here we have the ratio of the water depth divided by wave lengths, we have three regions. So this is our shallow wave region, intermediate wave region, and this is our deep water region. And for this, we defined shallow wave when the ratio of d divided by lambda less or equal than 0 0.05. Here, intermediate waves, the ratio is between 0 0.05 and 0 0.5. And finally here, the ratio for deep waves is greater or equal than 0 0.5. And now, for each of these regions, I show summary, which is equations for wave speed and wave length. So you can see that it's only for intermediate waves when you use full equation. And you can see that intermediate waves, you have to solve wave length equation using iteration method because you have lambda on both sides of this equation. Now let's solve an example where we need to use iteration method to determine the wavelengths. Sometimes this method is also called trial and error method. So our problem is we have gravity waves on water with the mean water depths of four meters. And these waves have a period of five seconds. And we need to determine the wavelengths and I will show you how you can do iteration manually so without using calculator and also without using any other functions such as solver function in Excel. So how we can use iteration method or trial and error method manually? So our procedure would be as follows. We know that we need to use full equation where lambda is on both sides of this equation. So let's use trial and error method. If I plotted a graph that shows dependence of function y, which is hyperbolic tangent of x, and how it depends on x, you can see that hyperbolic tangent of x would be equal to zero when x is equal to zero. And then with increase in x, hyperbolic tangent of x, will rapidly increase and approach 1 as x increases. Therefore, we can say that if we take the hyperbolic tangent value to be around 0.75, this will give us a reasonable fast approximation. And we can assume that hyperbolic tangent is equal to 0.75 and substitute this into this equation. So now what we do, we take our assumed value of hyperbolic tangent of 0.75 
and use full equation to calculate wavelengths and we get the wavelengths to be 29.27 meters and now using this obtained value of 29.27 meters I calculate my next wavelength value and this would be 27.15 meters so what you can see that what I did I substituted instead of lambda on the right hand side I used the value which I obtained before 29.27 and I got 27.15 meters as you can see they're not quite the same they should be the same what I do I now use this value to obtain my next wavelength number and I get 28.44 meters from previous slide I obtained the wavelengths to be 28.44 meters and I repeat the same process until the last value is very close to the previous value to speed up the process what I can do I can take the last two results and take average of the last two results for my next trial value and my last two results were 27.15 and 28.44 and the average of these two numbers is 27.80 so I take this as my next trial for next value of lambda and I get result of 28.04 meters and now I use this final number to recalculate my wavelengths and I obtain 27.8 9 meters and because this is less than 1% difference between last two values I take this as my final wavelength number so my final wavelength number is 27.89 and conclusion for this problem would be since the final value is less than 1% different from the previous value we adopt this value of 27.89 meters to be final wavelength value